This one is still in pieces, but this one's taking shape. Before we look at how I did the fabrication for the drift trike, let's look at how to wire up the brushless motor for this. All right, so let's get on to bench testing the motor. There are a lot of wires that come with the speed controller and fortunately the instructions are pretty hopeless. This is actually quite nice. It's got all of the things labeled. Then on the eBay listing, there was also this one, which looks like it was drawn in crayon, but hopefully between them and some videos I've watched on YouTube, I can work it out and get this thing going. First job is to connect up the batteries in series. Each one is 12 volts, so if we were to lay them in order, we would be going red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black. So each one connects onto the last one and the voltage gets added up. So 12, 24, 36, 48. I do have a 48 volt charger on the way, but ultimately you could pull them apart and then you could charge them with a normal cheap 12 volt charger as well. So they're not gonna sit in the mobility scooter like this. So actually gonna arrange them closer to how they're really gonna sit. And that is with them rotated. Like so, to be nice and compact. There might be a little bit of a gap in the final one, because I think that's how they laid out inside the mobility scooter, but essentially this is what we're aiming for. So let's get these started. So to do this wiring, we want some really thick gauge wire. I think on paper, if this was to use its maximum power with 48 volts, it should be able to draw 37 and a half amps. So if you look at the gauge of the wire I have here, it's very, very fat. This is a cable I'm recycling. It was set up for a stereo in a car that I purchased and I ripped that out and I've got all the cabling left over. I'm gonna use some wire strippers and the process is gonna be the same each time. I'm gonna strip the end part of the wire. I've got it stripped. I am going to twist it to help keep it neat. I've then got these crimp terminals. It's really important to match the size of the ring to the size of the terminal. Also got these really big ones because I didn't know what one was gonna be correct and these ones it turns out are too big. It's also important to match the size. So these are six mil wire and this stuff just fits. Let's keep this tidy, insert, twist as we push in. What we're aiming for is it poking through like that. And when that happens, we can get our crimping tool and we'll use the biggest opening. Line it up, making sure nothing moves. Little squeeze, everything's in the right place. Now a really big squeeze. Ugh. And it's in place. What we have here is a metal piece that starts like this and then when we crimp it, it crushes down and it gets a really nice mechanical grip on it. This should be very, very strong. Unable to pull it out. And this first one's gonna be quite short. We're gonna go from the shortest connection here. So I'm gonna cut it and crimp the other end and continue. So the terminals have these little screws, which we're going to remove and then put it through our freshly crimped terminal. Get this one into place and try and find wherever I've put the screw. Just going to loosen that first one to get the alignment a little bit nicer. There we go. Nice and tight. Time to get out the multimeter. Let's put it to a maximum of 200 DC. We'll firstly test a single battery by itself. And that gives us 12.3. But now if we go the two open terminals for the ones we've disconnected, we're up to 24.6, perfect. I'm gonna wire up the rest and cut back to when it's done. Okay, so I've got that part of the wiring done. Let's test it with the multimeter. Hopefully we can see the screen. I'm gonna to come to the two outside terminals, the only ones without the connections already in place and we're gonna touch it up. And excellent, 49.2. You'll notice I've left this middle one quite long. That's to give flexibility. So if I need to mount them either side of the seat post, I can do that. Nothing to stop me from cutting this down later on. I've got plenty of spare connectors left and plenty of the wire too. 
Okay, on to the proper stuff. Now, the motor controller comes with heaps and heaps of wires and hopefully this is gonna be the definitive guide to wiring this up because there's a lot of partial things here and there and questions being asked on the internet. If I can get this going, then hopefully it's a reliable source of information. Now I have connected the first set of wires. First we have the three phase wires for the motor. Simply got to match up the three colors. Very important that they don't touch. So I've just used cable ties for now to keep them separate. And I've just got a nut and bolt holding the two ring terminals together. They came pre-crimped onto the motor. The other thing I've done is the hall sensors. So the speed controllers talk to these motors by getting feedback through the loop on the position. It uses these hall wires to do so. So that's how it knows how fast it's spinning, where the position of the motor is, and that's how it knows which one of these to turn on and magnetize next to keep the rotation happening. That leaves us with all of these. Now this is a bit of a rat's nest, but the good news is all of these should be logic level five volts wiring. So it's not particularly dangerous or anything like that. So let's start with our instructions and get working through them. Oh, almost forgot. There is of course the overall positive and negative wires that will go to the battery, but that's the very last thing that we do. Okay, the first one we're gonna start with is labeled power lock and it's got two pins, orange and red. This is simply for the key switch. This is gonna to go to the key that's already on the mobility scooter. And basically when we short across these two, it's gonna turn on the whole system. So to do that, I have a jumper wire and I'm simply gonna short it by plugging in on one side plugging in on the other. And later on, I'm gonna test by pulling one side out to open up the circuit and everything should turn off. Okay, the next one we're gonna do, the stick has fallen off, but I know it is for the forward and reverse selector. It is gray, black, yellow. The middle black is a ground wire. So essentially, all we need to do to get this working is to connect up the middle and then to either this side or this side and that will select forward or reverse. If we don't have it connected, nothing's gonna happen. So in the final implementation, I'm gonna have it on a switch like this. This is a momentary switch. Momentary means that as soon as you let go, it springs back. It's not like a normal switch where when you let go, it stays in that position. So I stuffed up here by getting a momentary switch, which I do want. I'm gonna have this somewhere on the cart. So as I'm holding it down, I can then reverse. And then as soon as I let go, it goes back into forward. That can stop any mistakes happening. But what I should have got is one with three terminals. That's what I need for this. But for now, I'm just gonna short it with a jumper wire. When we turn it on, we'll work out which one is forward and which one is reverse. Okay, next one we're gonna do is the throttle. And it came with this superbly constructed foot pedal that's more silicon than anything else. But hopefully when I put something on top that's a little bit more durable, it works just fine. You could potentially use a throttle grip for this or even a potentiometer to do the same thing. All we're doing is varying a five volt signal back to the speed controller. So the wiring for this one is the one labeled throttle. It's red, which is five volts, black, which is ground, and then green, which is our signal. Now the foot pedal actually has a plug as well, and the plugs are the same, so they don't go together, which is pretty frustrating. So we're gonna have to wire this manually. The colors don't match either. So red will be to red on the foot pedal. Black on the speed controller is going to go to yellow on the foot pedal. And then one wire left, and that's gonna be green on the speed controller to blue on the foot pedal. Okay, this should be the minimum we need to get this thing started. So let's rearrange and put this close enough to connect up the positive and negative. And before I connect the last black wire, I'm gonna remove the wire from the power lock just so the system is not live and I don't get any nasty sparks. Okay, we've connected that up. The foot pedal should do nothing because we have the key not connected. So let's put in this and hopefully the system comes to life. Excellent. Let's test our direction one. So at the moment it's black and yellow. Let's put it to black and gray instead. Should spin the other way. And you can hear it's a lot lower speed. So we know that gray is reverse and yellow is forward. Now you might be thinking this is pretty good, but there's actually one more thing that you don't have to wire up, but you really, really want to. And that's the speed control. 
On eBay it was advertised as having two speeds, but it's actually got three. And if I hadn't watched some YouTube videos, I might have missed this. So watch very carefully. We're gonna find the wire called Stalls. It is blue, black, and green. It works in a similar way to our forward and back control. Black being ground and blue and green being high and low speed. If we leave it disconnected like it is now, that's on medium speed. So what we actually want to do is to connect the black to either side to select those speeds. So let's go black to green and try it again. You can hear that's high speed. And now let's try black to blue, low speed, black to nothing, medium speed, black to green, high speed. Imagine if you had installed this and not done this one and been stuck on medium speed the whole time. There's a fair chance you'll be wasting a fair amount of the power that you have with this system. One or two more things to try. We've got a braking one here, so let's grab another jumper wire. And you would expect it to kill the power to the motor when the brake pedal was switched. So this will be connected to my braking foot pedal. And let's see if I can juggle this. Let's give it some throttle. Excellent, worked exactly like we want it to. So that's almost all of the wires. Let's explore the last couple. We have one labeled brake also in white and orange. And I've set up a little breadboard here with an LED and a resistor. And hopefully when we hit the brakes, this one comes on. So let's plug it in. Not expecting to see anything until we short our brake one, which I've now lost. Here it is. Okay, it seems to be working, but I can smell the resistor is very hot. So I'm just gonna check the voltage on this. Maybe it's not five volts. Excellent, 48 volt output for the brake light. So, and then the other one that we have is our indicator one and let's probe that as well. I thought maybe that was for a buzzer when you're in reverse, but seems to be a constant 48 volts as well. So maybe you could use that for an output to some sort of dash display showing how much battery voltage you have left. One final connection that we haven't looked at yet. And this one, according to the diagram is the speed indicator. So it's got four wires. At this stage, I'm not gonna worry about wiring it up, but if I get bored later on, maybe I'll investigate it and get something happening on the dash. So there we have it, everything is wired up. That should be one of the hardest parts over in terms of the electronics for the mobility scooter. I'm pleased that it's working for me and it should be a reliable guide for you. So the wiring for the brushless motor is sussed and it should be pretty easy to drop that into the mobility scooter once the axle and other parts arrive. I did intend originally to put in the drift trike fabrication and build into this video, but the truth is it's already far too long. So I'm gonna save that for the next one. The good news is that's already filmed, so it shouldn't be too long until it's out. And here is a taste of what you can expect to find in that episode. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.